Get back to that major announcement from the FDA. Children ages 12 to 15 will soon be able to get that Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can take your kid to a pharmacy or their pediatrician today. I want to quickly walk you through what happens next. So first, an advisory committee will meet tomorrow to talk about whether to recommend Pfizer shots for kids ages 12 to 15. And then the CDC will consider the panel's recommendations. If they give it the go ahead, which is likely, we could see shots going into arms as soon as Thursday. Uh, so at this moment, it's not a done deal yet, but we are very close. A lot of parents have questions about what kind of research has gone into approving the Pfizer vaccine for adolescents. So joining me with answers is infectious disease expert Dr. Todd Ellerin. Good to see you this morning. Good morning, Sonia. So first of all, uh, you know, some epidemiologists who take a look at this data, at least one of them say they give it an A++. So can you just explain what randomized control trials are? Right. What it means is um, if you're a volunteer in a trial, first of all, it's voluntary. That's key. And you decide that you're willing to go through this. You sign informed consent. You understand the risks, benefits and alternatives. And then you enter the trial and understand that you're going to be randomized, which means you're either going to be in the actual vaccine group where you get the vaccine or you're going to be in placebo, which does not have that active ingredient that makes the vaccine effective. So, you know, both placebo and, and, and the active group both get shot. So you have to roll up your sleeves, but you don't know which one you're in. And interestingly, all the investigators don't know either. And that's why we can really, when we say something safe and effective, we really know that it is because you basically randomized people to two different equally matched groups with the only variable that's different is that vaccine. So in this case, 2,200 children plus uh, were enrolled in the trial. There were 18 cases of COVID-19 infection in the group that received the placebo and none in the case of children who received the vaccine. What does this tell us? I mean, Sonia, you could say 18 you know, infections is not a large group, but when you have 18 that all occurred in the unvaccinated group or the placebo group, and zero in the group that actually got that active vaccine, you know that this is a very impressive result. And it's very unlikely due to chance alone. So we can truly say that it's, that it's effective. And of course, also safety, whenever we're dealing with, especially a pediatric population, where you know that kids do better than adults, the FDA always scrutinizes this through a very, uh, through a lens of safety. They're gonna make sure this is extremely safe before they, they vet it and say it's okay to go and, to the next level. And Dr. Ellerin, you've got a 12 year old, a 15 year old, I assume they're both getting vaccinated? I mean, what I'm really encouraged about is yes, they are, but they're also excited to get the vaccine because they know that that will make it safer for when they both go to camp this summer, if, if they get it before camp, which I assume they will. And also beginning next fall before they go to school. Let's think about it. these kids are going to, you know, it's going to be even safer. And we know schools are very safe already when they use the, you know, the safety protocols, but it gives them and us as parents that extra level of confidence. And let's face it, we've had a fairly anxiety provoking year, year and a half, and we need some confidence going forward. And these vaccines are, are the right way forward. Dr. Todd Ellerin, thank you for your time this morning. Really Take appreciate it. All right.